Now that the stars have found their place, even the sun will bring you praise. Heavenly lights will shine for you. When I am lost, you are my way. Jesus, my everlasting strength.
What do you call a pile of cats? A meowton. <laughs> Why was the math book so sad? Because it had a lot of problems. What did the slow tomato say to the others? Don't worry, I'll catch up. Why don't eggs tell jokes? Because they would crack each other up. Someone just stole my mood ring. I'm not sure how I feel about that. What's the difference between a good joke and bad joke? Timing! You get it? 
timing. <laughs> what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? A maybe. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. Hi families and happy Father's Day. No matter your season of life, I'm sure you appreciate a good dad joke or you've gotten really good at pretending to. So you're welcome. Now we know that Father's Day is a special day for a lot of you and that it can bring up a lot of emotions and different emotions for different people. And so we want you to know that this is for all of you. This is for those of you who have a great father. This is for those of you who have a father you're not close with. This is for those of you who have a father who is distant or absent. This is for those of you who have a father who has passed away. Or this is for those of you who have been fathered by a grandfather or uncle or brother or mother. Maybe you've been fathered by a stepfather. This is for you as well. Maybe you've been fathered by someone who has adopted you or someone who is not related to you in any way. May you know you are beautiful. You are handsome. You are good enough. You have what it takes. You belong. You are worthy of being loved. You are loved and we are proud of you. So all you fathers and father figures, we know that today is full of a variety of emotions for you as well. And we wanna take a minute and recognize that. We wanna recognize that some of you out there have great relationships with your kids. And some of you, your role as a father has not turned out anything like you had planned. Some of you mourn a little bit because you have lost a child. Some of you are fathering children who will never call you dad. And some of you are, are fathering children who do not have your own DNA in them. And so for all of you, know that you are loved, you are appreciated, and your role in the lives of those around you are important. And may you continue to draw closer to God whose image we were created in. May the characteristics of God be seen in how you love those around you. May you know you are needed more than you realize by both those you father and the fatherless around you. May you understand the greatest gift you can give and sacrifice you can make is that of your time and compassion. So this Father's Day, I challenge all of you to write down the names of the father figures in your life. Now, it may just be one or it may be multiple. And once you write down their name, I encourage you to write a poem or make a card, send an email, send a text, make a phone call, or make a toast to honor those father figures. Let them know that you appreciate them and you love them. And if you can give reasons why, that makes it even better. I promise this will be one of the best gifts you can give, and it'll be one of the best gifts that they will receive. And so to all you fathers and father figures out there, on behalf of Grace Church, happy Father's Day. We love you and we hope that this day is as special as it can be for you. And so I encourage everyone watching to cup your hand as we say this blessing over you. May God bless you and protect you. May God show you mercy and be gracious to you. May God show you kindness and grant you peace. Amen. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to another Grace Church online service and message. I'm so glad you're here. Happy Father's Day to all of the men and all of you. And today, uh, this is super fun because Pastor Isaiah and I are here with the Jessicas. We've got his <laughs> wife, Jessica Granados. We have my Jess. And uh, we're going to together put a bow on the Emotionally Healthy Relationship Series that we've been doing at Grace over the past couple of months. And uh, before we get to that, I do want to just reach back to uh, the last couple of Sundays. If by chance you missed the interviews I did with Pastor Donald Rucker and with Norman Coulter, I would love for you to tune in on those. Um, we had some wonderful discussions about racism and the kingdom of God and how we should be positioning ourselves as followers of Jesus right now. And we're actually going to take those two interviews and we're going to repost them um, just as standalone talks together on YouTube on our, our Grace Church Laverne channel. So if you want to forward those as a resource, it won't have to have all of our announcements and, and music and those things. They could just get right to those talks. But those guys are awesome. Those men are, are smart and insightful and it was really helpful, um, I think, to orient ourselves in this whole time that we're living in. But today, I, I do want us to, to reach back to that Emotionally Healthy series and, and, 
um, conclude that. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to be starting a different theme that'll tie into our summer reading program that we're doing here. But since you always hear from me, I thought it'd be fun to hear from some more interesting voices. And so I, I so appreciate you all for joining me. Thank you. You're <laughs> we are happy to be here. For having us. <laughs> and you did have a choice. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't coerce you. So, by the way, babe, are these chairs okay? They're La fine. <laughs> she watched... My feet touched the floor. That's what's most important. <laughs> she, she watched my interview last Sunday with Norman, and she goes, Babe, I am not going to perch on a stool while you ask me questions about relationships. So, so um, we're just going to interact a little bit around some questions about emotional health. And but we'll kind of cover a few different things. And I will start with you, babe. I'll start with um, probably an easy one. So speaking of relationships, what what do you love about me? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Although we were talking about that the other day with, about what you love about me? Yes, wow. nice. in, with someone else in an interview. Remember, and you were so sad that I didn't say more. Oh, I, okay. You're like, why don't you have a lot more to say? Sorry, and you had that. to bring that up right here. Yeah. So that's great. <laughs> no, let's let me let me. I want to dive right into some some stuff. So let's let's um let's start with COVID nineteen. Let's start with the coronavirus, and we'll get to emotional health here in a second. But although this kind of ties together, but how did you all do during quarantine? Did you did you just Rocket, and I know we're still in it, but have you <laughs> learned that foreign language and picked up oil painting and stayed super <laughs> no. close to God? No. <laughs> no? No. I honestly thought I would have done better. <laughs> being an introvert and being at home, I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to love it. But it's been really difficult. It's been really difficult for me. What have some of them? I want to publicly apologize <laughs> for why it's been extremely difficult. <laughs> Being with Isaiah 24, no, <laughs> no, I, I think just um, the lack of routine. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a person who I, I thrive in routine, and mm -hmm. so I mean, I would leave the house before my before my family was awake, and go to work, and come home, mm -hmm. and we'd have sports, and you know, just I knew what the day looked like, mm -hmm. and now um, just with the kids being in school, and then spring break, and school, and we're working full-time from home, uh, right. it's been so challenging and just not feeling like, and we, of course, can't go anywhere, and um, it's, it's just been a struggle for me, a lot of pajama days, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in, even feeling low, being exhausted, just yeah. feeling like I'm not myself, mm -hmm. so it, it's, it's been challenging. I know it feels like, oh, we should have done better. I'm, it, we're in June. I should have this down by now. But um, yeah, it's it's been tough. So I'm trying to do a schedule with the kids mm -hmm. and get back to some mm -hmm. sense of normalcy for me. But yeah, yeah. still working on it. Yeah. yeah. How would you grade yourself? You thought you would have done better? Oh, you... A C, a D? I don't know. <laughs> I bet it's way better than that. Somewhat one. passing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Jessica Granados is barely passing COVID. C minus. How about you, babe? I think for me, uh, one of the hardest things has been, and for all of us, is a lot of the losses, mm -hmm. and that's everyone across the board, but um, some more than others, and I've felt really compassionate, and my heart's been really heavy for people like Maddie, our youngest, who's a senior in high school, so those graduating high school, college, I mean, big events, we, one of our best friends, they had to, you know, cancel their wedding and postpone that. And those are big deals that you look forward to your whole life or like Maddie's worked so hard for four years. And that was a grief to watch her, of course, as a parent lose that. Mm -hmm. She handled it well, but that was hard. And then I think for me, I, um, I know over the years I've been open about the fact that I'm on antidepressants and I have been for gosh 15 years and I'm really open about that but just being really vigilant and using the tools that I've learned through the years to make sure I don't sink and get really low or um, staying close to the Lord and relationships and all of that because yeah. it can get really discouraging and I love movie days and show days but Three months of that is it gets old right. for all of us. I know. I know you've also 
watch the news a lot and you've mm -hmm. always that's a thing for you is you like to be current on what's happening but that's created even a dynamic because we're in a little bit of a bubble because yeah. we're healthy fortunately right. but also just watching so many people struggle and yeah. it's um it weighs on you how are you doing isaiah i think i'm doing well um I might be causing more issues for other people, <laughs> but I, yeah, I think I think initially it was okay, cool. We'll just figure things out, yeah. and I like I like spontaneity, and I like to mix things up, and so it was a welcomed kind of thing. Not the COVID, you know, stuff. I've just been like the the change. Yeah. So I do like that because I think change is good, mm -hmm. and um, but obviously it's it's when you think about kind of the people that were impacted and. And some of the families that I, I have talked to, yeah. um, going through losses with mm -hmm. with kids stuff and not being able to have those experiences and those moments. But even just, I've had friends who, um, you know, just passing. You know, and right. so it's that whole how do you how do you handle all that? How do you manage um, that when you're limited to the amount of people that can gather, right. and you just go, what is what's going on? It feels very 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 foreign yeah. to you know, the, the freedom that you, you've kind of lived with and didn't recognize that you had so much of it. So uh, I've been up and down. It's kind of like a roller coaster. Sometimes I'm really great. I'm able to, I'm able to encourage most people. But at, then there's times where I, it just feels like like I'm not myself. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's talk about those times when, um, when, when the roller coaster is taking the dip. How do you encourage yourself? How do you... You, know, you you mentioned staying vigilant, and mm -hmm. you know, Jess, you mentioned, you know, I, I thought I would do better, and it kind of, you know, surprised me that this has been as difficult as it's been. How do you encourage yourself in the Lord? Mm -hmm. um, our theme verse for Ziklag for one of our men's ministries is in First Samuel thirty, when David was just at the end of his rope. His men wanted to kill him; they were so distraught. And it says, "But David encouraged himself in the Lord." So, mm -hmm. how do you guys do that? Because it's, you know, it's different for you and me. So. Mm -hmm. Any insights that might be helpful for all of us of how you guys do that? Um, we have speakers throughout our house, and mm -hmm. so I like to put on worship music. Mm -hmm. I like it when the kids um, ask for certain playlists and we can all sing together. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes we have a mood in our house, and I feel like when we put on music that's uplifting and glorifying to God, it, it brings a sense of mm -hmm. peace in our house. Mm -hmm. And um, I also try to just be in the moment. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to allow myself to be mm -hmm. um, and just enjoy the time that I even have with my kids in the morning, being thankful that I get mm -hmm. to actually wake up with them and have breakfast with them, something mm -hmm. I'm not used to doing. So, well, I, mm -hmm. I've often talked about the atmosphere in our home and how worship shifts the atmosphere, but I like the word mood. Yeah. That you, How do you know when the mood is such that you need to put on worship music or change the mood? I, I feel low, and mm -hmm. I can see even in my kids. No, it's not a sadness. It's just... Mm -hmm. um, heaviness. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's a good word. Yeah, mm -hmm. a heaviness. And, um, and we play music all the time anyway, but... Mm -hmm. There's definitely times where it's okay. We we need to do this. Okay. We need to we need to have that in the background to be able to worship our way through this time. Even if I'm not saying that to the kids, yeah. Yeah. it's just I know that it helps yeah. us in general as a that's family, good. and and that's been that's been a, a big mm -hmm. lifesaver for us. Yeah, mm. that's so good. I would say the same for me. I um, there were several times I would go out on walks or. Um, you know, in our living room at night a couple times, just worship my heart out and worship my way out of discouragement mm -hmm. or out of that mood or um, just even the blah feelings that mm -hmm. after so many days of just kind of the same thing and feeling like nothing's going to be different, um, worship is key for me and gratitude. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly... For me personally, um, the first couple months, I was really focusing on soaking in the moments. And I mean, when will I have you and the girls home again 24 7 like we have? Mm -hmm. Our life is very busy mm -hmm. normally. And so I loved it. I wanted to make memories and make mm -hmm. it special. But then, yeah, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I would do that for a week, but <laughs> now Vacation's we're on three over. weeks. So, yeah. 
yeah, you have to lift yourself up and each mm. other. That's good. I like what you're both saying because there's a, a theme, worship your way through. You yeah. said we're worshiping our way through. You said worship your way out of. Mm -hmm. That's good. Worship is a vehicle that takes us somewhere. Mm -hmm. It takes us to God's presence where the, the landscape changes or at least the perspective changes. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what do you do, Pastor? <laughs> well, I sit silently reading my Bible. <laughs> Uh, no, I think, I mean, it's, it, you were saying, you, you kind of said it, it, you know, in that worship kind of takes us out of something, it brings us from, delivers, delivers us from, from that heaviness, but it, it does also take us into the presence of God, like you said, and that's what I would have added. I think that hmm. leading worship and playing music, I mean, that's just been part of my, the way in which I remain and then get connected with hmm. God, so I do have that, um, opportunity to to do that with the guitar and with the song mm. and and just sit mm. and and listen and just try to remember that God's with me in this and that he is going he's already been through this and he's mm. going to lead me out of this and mm. and so for me it's, it's, it's there's a lot of centering in in that sense mm. of you know Christ being the center but also I, I think intellectually I guess mm. you want to say that I mean you know reading here and there then also there's a there's a couple of things that uh, tools that I use. One's called the Bio Project, and if you're familiar with that, it's it's a it's a video series that uh, two pastors basically put together, and it's um it's an opportunity for you to uh, to learn through animation and it's, it's very creative computer uh, digital graphics, and they tell the story of pretty much almost every book in the Bible, but then also themes like atonement and grace and forgiveness and uh, unconditional love. And, and so that just sitting there with my, by myself, I've seen a lot of them, but, but with the kids mm -hmm. and we were able to stop it after and just, I just ask questions like, what do you mm -hmm. think about that? What do you think they meant? And so for us, it's been a, a really good, good. productive teaching, learning time as well through mm -hmm. that. And I think that's been really encouraging yeah. because it's led to many faith conversations that Sometimes you just need prompts. I mean, yeah. you know, we don't come with, it's not auto automatic. Sure. So we, we need yeah. some prompts. Yeah, that's good. I love what you're saying. And just as a quick aside, um, it's a proven thing that ongoing education is a cure for burnout. It's mm -hmm. not the cure necessarily, but it's a proven cure to, um, you know, offload some of the effects of burnout. So I mm -hmm. love that. Um, and for me, one of the ways I change the atmosphere is scripture. You know, mm -hmm. you can change the atmosphere through worship, but when you speak scripture, mm -hmm. and so if, if you read the Psalms, you'll notice that a lot of times David's practically preaching to his own soul. He repeats the same theme. Sometimes it's because it's poetic and it's music, but sometimes he's he's got to say it three times before his soul will engage. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways that we stay encouraged. But Jess, what, you, you said something to me so good the other day. You were talking about the daily steps and how breakthrough uh, might look different than we sometimes think you yeah I was um yeah just at different times in my life I'm expecting and praying for like such a big breakthrough was that word such a change to happen for circumstances to change or my heart to change mm -hmm. or um and I realized you know it seems obvious, but the daily steps and commitments of being faithful, it's amazing how after, you know, a short time you look back and see how far you've actually come. Right. And it's just being, being faithful in the moment. Right. And those those moments of choosing right. and um, making wise choices and leaning on the Lord or um, you go, yeah. you are further than you thought you would be yeah I love it because and I love how you said that you phrased that that when you're taking just one step at a time or one day at a time that never feels like a breakthrough because mm -hmm. all I did was I just took one step but if you if you string together enough one step suddenly you've made significant progress mm -hmm. and breakthrough you we were talking last night it's kind of like mm -hmm. the sun the sunrise right you know that the, the the sun doesn't burst on the scene it, it it rises by degrees and with each degree it doesn't necessarily feel like the whole world's changing until you put enough of those together so mm -hmm. so we could keep Very going true. on this um, that was super helpful for me though mm -hmm. um, I feel like an interviewer officially <laughs> but, but it was super like helpful <laughs> but um, let's shift gears and let's spend a, a few minutes landing the plane on emotionally healthy relationships so why don't we just start what 
what is an emotionally healthy relationship? Jess, what, how would you define that? <laughs> uh, it is, I, I think it's being able to recognize in the moment how you're how you're feeling how you're how you're doing kind of just checking in with yourself and okay. saying um it's okay to feel this way okay but if it's something that's not good then i need to take the steps to move out of that okay um even the other day we were mm-hmm. putting our kids to sleep we'd prayed with them said goodnight to kaya and i went to put silas in bed and i could tell he there was something that was off mm-hmm. Even though he said goodnight to me, I, I just mm-hmm. said, I said, what's the matter? And um, he, he said, nothing, nothing. And I just, mm-hmm. I kept pressing him. What, what's going on? You can tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ended up talking mm-hmm. about it. And again, I think it's just a, mm-hmm. a symptom of okay. our new schedule, okay. the rules, things that he felt were unfair. Mm-hmm. But we talked it through and worked it out mm-hmm. and were able to come up with a solution yeah. and but I think it's just taking the time to pause and say, okay. okay, what do we need to work through in this moment and yeah. deal with it? Let's let's talk That's about cool. it. And um, So you're kind of connecting an emotionally healthy relationship to what we call emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. which would be self-awareness, self-regulating ability, and then empathy for others. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Yes, there. exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you said. Yes, that, that, that is right. what you said. Um, good, that's awesome, Isaiah. What um, when we talk when we interact with people as pastors and all of us, but so so many people feel guilt about their relationships, and we, you know, we all love to celebrate the person who you know their kids are doing great and their marriage is awesome, and everybody want if they're married, they, and everybody wants to show up and sing their praises um, at key moments in their lives. And is it possible to have an emotion? emotionally healthy relationships if things are broken can you be can you be mm-hmm. a success let me say it that way can you be a success in relationships if you still have fractures and damaged relationships yeah no that's a good question and i think it's true i think everyone feels like they they see whether it's on social media or mm-hmm. on tv or even in real life when you talk to when you, you talk to a pastor or some someone else that you you see as a uh, important figure mm-hmm. um authority even maybe sometimes you just assume that they have it all together yeah. and that that it's that their version is the successful version and I have mm-hmm. to somehow climb the ladder achieve or I go in the opposite mm-hmm. way I just start to sink and think that I'm never going to be mm-hmm. like so and so and to be honest like that's those are real honest feelings that yeah. I have <laughs> and mm-hmm. and that I have every day and and so checking those I think in, in through the through the lens of we, we all, all have messiness and we all mm-hmm. carry stuff with us mm-hmm. and and really emotional emotionally being emotionally healthy is is not about a uh, destination it, it's about the journey through mm-hmm. this life and and it's about having the desire to want to be healthy to become yeah. uh, to, to correct some things but also to grow from some things mm-hmm. I, I you know I've, we're a big baseball family and probably mm-hmm. talk about it too much in my in, not in my opinion I think we don't talk about it enough <laughs> but I but you know for us, when, when it comes to, and I, I just love sports in general, so let me just put that out there. But but in baseball, you know, it's a failure sport. Mm-hmm. And people don't think that. I mean, I teach mm-hmm. little kids mm-hmm. how to how to learn fundamentals. Mm-hmm. And part of the fundamentals is, is actually a good portion is not physical. I mean, yes, that's that's easy, easy to correct. Mm-hmm. It's the mental game that, for all sports mm-hmm. really, but especially baseball, because a successful baseball player fails seven times out of ten. Mm-hmm. Seven. I mean, that's failure in, in, in the largest sense in every sport. It's just and so helping them to learn. Look, that it's not about it's not about like sinking into that failure. It's yeah. about learning how to overcome and and power through yeah. that failure because fa- failure is coming. Messiness is here. Brokenness yeah. is everywhere. Um, and we can throw up our hands and say it's never going to be perfect. You're right. It isn't. It, it isn't. Right. And so. That's why we need each other to be in, in, in a desire to want to to grow from wherever we are. But ultimately, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to um, to guide us mm-hmm. and remind us that that's not what He sees when He looks at that's you. That's good. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, He that's sees good. He so sees good. His perfect risen Son yeah. and and Savior that's inside awesome. of you. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's that's the reminder that I need mm-hmm. to not go. Yeah, I feel better about myself. No, it's mm-hmm. it's like, gosh, I need you. God, I need you. You know, I think of all the songs that talk yeah. about that kind of stuff. And to me, 
That is, I need that reminder every single day. So good. That's a really helpful comparison in calling mm-hmm. baseball a failure sport. D- didn't Reggie Jackson hold a strikeout record as well as <laughs> leading yeah. home run records oh, yeah. at times? Yeah. Yeah, and so just what you said there, I think I'm hearing the same thing, is that it's in healthy relationships come from us being healthy. Mm-hmm. And a successful relationship doesn't mean it's perfect. It means we're operating from a place of health. Mm-hmm. When we're healthy, we can give, we can serve. And I love how you just ended that response that um, w- how God views us and how we view ourselves. I, we, I've seen people who who were amazing in relationships, but the relationship still broke apart because it takes two people. It takes two parties. I can be divorced having been a really great spouse. Absolutely. And and I can be I could be a fantastic parent having really tough relationships with my kids because we're dealing with free willed mm-hmm. humans and I think it's healthy to lift some of this perfection pressure off of people um, that it, it doesn't mean things are perfect um, but but I want to just key in on one simple thing that we haven't really talked about in this series and this is where we'll camp out for just a few, few more minutes here is um, in Song of Solomon chapter 2 I'll read the verse it says in verse 15, so in this incredible biblical relationship in Song of Solomon, it says, Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, are vineyards that are in bloom. And I always love that verse when it comes to relationships coaching, whether we're talking about you know colleagues at work or siblings or if you're married or any kind of a relationship because um, we all know how scary giants can be when Goliath shows up everything changes and it's so overwhelming but this passage is telling us that even little foxes can ruin the vineyard so you know you've you've, we've heard that statement about a you know death by a thousand paper cuts could be a real thing and yet one or two cuts and it's just an annoyance but but let's just talk about that for a few minutes um and what what is a little fox in a relationship well i mean in general i'm not going to get real specific just yet but i think in general it's something that we we that kind of jabs at our preference or the, a way that we think or feel how things should be done, mm-hmm. and it's something that like kind of just a little bit a little bit contrary to how you would have done it, yeah. and um, and you kind of glossing over it, okay. kind of brushing it aside, saying it's not a big deal, mm-hmm. and in the larger picture, it probably isn't a big deal until it becomes many. Okay. Little deals. <laughs> is it different from a pet peeve, or is it? Is there? Is it just? Is it different from just something that's irritating, or? Yeah, I think so. I, I know even just in our communication, being married all these years, sometimes we talk like this, okay. mm-hmm. and I think I'm saying one thing, and he interprets it differently. Okay. And I'll say, I, that's not what I was trying to say, yeah. <laughs> and he'll tell me how it made him feel. And so we kind of do this back and forth. And um, so that's different than a pet peeve. It's not like he's okay. annoyed with how I'm talking or, okay. you know, but it's it's a, a misunderstanding. Okay. And and we've had many of those. <laughs> but that can... Today. <laughs> this morning. No. <laughs> but can lead to a huge area of you know, a, a huge gap in our relationship if we don't address that and figure out how am I, what, what do I need to say or how do I need to say it differently mm-hmm. or or me not being offended by the way he says something because I know his intention, I know his heart, I, you know, and kind of giving mm-hmm. each other grace in that. That's good. That's good. I think that's a perfect explanation that it's a small thing that becomes a big thing if left unchecked. Mm-hmm. You know, a little fox running around the vineyard for a few minutes isn't that big of a deal. Missing each other in a conversation, oh my gosh, that happens. But if that continues, you said it can actually create a gap. So something as simple as, Mm -hmm. yeah, we just communicate differently actually leads to we can't communicate. Mm -hmm. And if we can't communicate, where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the the imagery of little foxes in the vineyard, Mm -hmm. you just go, I mean, it's if if it's chewing up the vine or gnawing at the root, it's you think, well, how much damage is that really going to do? Yeah. Um, but over time, it, it completely disconnects the vine mm-hmm. from the source yeah. and mm-hmm. can ruin a vineyard that takes a while to build up. Mm-hmm. And just like a relationship, any relationship, friendship, marriage, doesn't matter, 
any relationship that takes a while to build up to become a really solid, strong relationship, allowing that stuff mm-hmm. to happen over and over and over again um, ends up destroying the vineyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when you forget to put the, <laughs> the check, okay. you know, enter the receipt in the check. Hypothetically. Yeah, like, so, I mean, so, hypothetically, yeah. So, so hypothetically, that was cute the first few times yeah. because you're busy talking to people and you're so, you know, fun and social. And that's kind of cute. She forgets. And then it then it goes to annoying. Like she Absolutely. didn't put it in there again. And then it goes to stressing me out. Yeah. So yeah. would that be a, a little... A little yes. more. And I feel like I've really worked on that. <laughs> but I'll work harder, obviously. No. <laughs> no, I think for little foxes, when it starts to really um, destroy a relationship mm-hmm. or bring such damage to a relationship or that potential to happen, yeah. you have to address it. Yeah. So annoyance to, you know, hurt yeah. or wanting to withdraw that's different that's good so mm-hmm. let's talk about addressing it um mm-hmm. h- how do you like to be approached um with mm-hmm. the reality of your little foxes you know it's one thing if i'm challenging you babe you've got to enter this in the checkbook yeah. it's one thing if if you're frustrated with a coworker because they keep you know misplacing or showing up late or whatever but how do you like to be received how should we how do we address these things in ways that are emotionally healthy mm-hmm. I, I like people to just tell me, just talk to me. I don't like passive aggressiveness. I don't like little comments of, well, if you would do that, or Mm -hmm. I I do not respond well to that. Um, I like just being told outright, straightforward, and then I like to talk it through. Yeah. I would rather someone tell me if they're hurt or annoyed or offended. So... Mm -hmm. You can talk to me later, babe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just be up front, Chris. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Let her have it. Jess, how about uh, you? I'll, I'll take story time. <laughs> I think that More I'll just, I'll, for, for us, or I, I relate with, uh, I'm a very empathetic person. And mm. so when someone tells me how I have unintentionally made them feel or mm-hmm. you know that this has bothered them in some way something that I've done has bothered them or hurt mm-hmm. them I I can I can get there I'm, mm-hmm. okay I I'm sorry and I feel horrible and it makes mm-hmm. me want to change if someone just kind of comes at me okay. with this is I, I don't like that um, my pride is too great. <laughs> it's it, it's it's very tough for me to say I'm sorry. I'm just gonna okay. say that. Mm-hmm. So I'm working on it. But yeah. um yeah, if if ever he has come to me and said, This really bothers me, mm. this is how it made me feel, or you know, I, I don't appreciate it when you have done this. Story time's good for me. It's like mm-hmm. let you know. Okay. That helps me. It's good. And mm-hmm. so gentleness helps you touch a place of humility. Yes. Yeah, you know, we all want we all want a humble response and we know that humility releases grace and we know that grace is the power of God. So if you can get a little grace flowing, there's hope. But but so gentleness helps the person touch a place mm-hmm. of humility. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Probably too, and I'm not, I'm not trying to cut you off. Probably because um I'm an Enneagram one. Yeah. So I'm very just black, white, mm-hmm. right, wrong, um mm-hmm. tasks, you know, like relationships are to the side a little bit. So when someone at, comes at me with, you know, it, it touches my heart. Like, yeah. okay, I have feelings about that. Mm-hmm. It helps me to relate a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not a robot. I need to address this mm-hmm. person to person. Yeah. I would also say that just, I mean, people are probably, most people are probably familiar with uh, Gary Chapman's love languages, mm-hmm. the five love languages. And, and I think that we kind of throw those in like premarital conversations and marriage conversations and and yet we we don't revisit them because mm-hmm. we kind of go yeah mine's touch and mine's you know quality time and all that stuff but but really thinking that through when it comes to approaching someone yeah. mm-hmm. with some difficult stuff it, it's probably best to lead with their love language mm-hmm. and good. and you know so if and I don't, I'm not saying that I do that <laughs> I'm just saying that it would be a good idea if someone did that. Uh, but I, I do think that it's probably best for us in that gentleness to approach them 
in through their language first, mm -hmm. so that way you can convey how it's affecting you. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. That's super. I think too, one thing that's really helpful in addressing these little fox issues, first of all, we have to address them mm -hmm. because according to that scripture, they're ruining the vineyard, which means mm -hmm. there is a vineyard. That's good that there's mm -hmm. harvest, there's potential, but they have to be addressed. But I think one thing that's super helpful is, is to, rather than coming at you, which could make you shut down, um, I think to say, let's talk about this fox and let's move it to the center of the table. Mm -hmm. So this isn't you versus me. This is what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is the message that this dynamic is sending to me. Is that what you meant to do? Is that what you intended? And, and usually the person will say, no, that's not what I meant. Okay, well, do you see how that could be sending the message? Yes. And, and we can peel this back. Unfortunately, remember, we're talking about little foxes. I realize mm -hmm. things can get so involved that you need help and therapy, which we are huge supporters of at Grace Church. But in dealing with these little things, okay, friend, sister, babe, you, you, you keep doing this. Mm -hmm. This is sending a message to me. This is how the message is affecting me. Mm -hmm. What do we do about I that? Think, I think in, in a relationship, there's, there's got to be a willingness if, if on the other part to want to listen mm -hmm. and then change a little bit. You're not asking someone to just, you know, the pendulum for the to switch to the other side. It's, mm -hmm. it's incrementally growing through each and every circumstance. And so as a, as an, a part of a relationship, friendship, marriage, it's, it's got to also be on me to then oh, listen yeah. to it and go, all right, how can I slowly change this? Because I can't say, okay, I'll never do that again. I probably will do it multiple times again, but I, I just need, I need to be reminded of it. And then I'm going to work on one step at a time. Right. And if we could, if we as people, and if all of us, if we could get to a place where we didn't dread correction or we just mm -hmm. try and survive it, we could actually realize that confrontation, if it's done well, mm -hmm. is a portal to revelation and insight. It says in the Proverbs, God, yeah. the Father speaking, saying, if you would turn to my reproof, if you would turn to my rebuke, I would pour out my words to you. And, mm -hmm. and so if we handle this well, it can actually be super insightful and a discipleship mm -hmm. moment. But Jess, you, you mentioned the Enneagram and then Isaiah, you just mentioned love languages. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of incredible tools out there for understanding our temperament, our makeup. There's Myers-Briggs, there's Strengths Finder, there's spiritual gift inventories. But I know you specifically, um, the Enneagram has been helpful for you guys. What, any comments on how that's helped you guys in your emotional health? Uh, I would say that understanding the motivation behind why I'm mm. doing the actions that I'm doing or why I get upset in certain circumstances okay. or why he does certain things. Okay. And it, you know, we've had arguments over the years about various things okay. and it just has given us a different lens to mm. see, to understand each other a little bit better. Mm. It's, it's that motivation and mm. being able to, look at our past and say, okay, where have we come from and why do I act that way now? Mm -hmm. And it's not that we can't change and not that we aren't kind of all of the numbers, but primarily I'm, I'm doing this for mm -hmm. some reason. Why, why am I doing this? And am, am I operating out of health okay. or am I operating out of a lack, you okay. know? So it's, it's just given us a, a common language to talk about and to understand each other as we've worked through some okay. of our conflict. So that, can you, can you give an, a, put a practical example to that? Because what you're saying is so good about the motivation. Usually when there's a little fox running through the field, we're just annoyed with the fox. This isn't good. You got to write the thing in the checkbook, but we don't really talk about, sorry to keep coming yeah, back to that. Uh, that <laughs> wow. That must be a big deal. We better <laughs> talk about that later. But, but the motivation, um, sometimes it's not just my motivation is that I'm not thinking or my motivation is that I'm too busy. Sometimes it's a, it is our, our bent as our personality. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that you handle situations this way because your personality makes you want to respond a certain way. It, I don't know. Can you make that? I think that's really good. Do you have an example? I can give a, t a tiny little example. So if I tell my kids to clean their rooms, okay. because I'm a one and I want things done a certain way. What's and a one? Like you're, you're striving to perfect perfection. Like you want to reform everything. You okay. want it to be, you know, done the right way. Okay. And you want to be, um, known as being good. Like what mm -hmm. I've done is, is good. Mm -hmm. So my kids say, okay, my room's clean. And I go in there. <laughs> I don't start with, 
great job. You've cleaned your room. I love it. Thanks for immediately I criticize. Uh, well, how come you left this? Oh, did you not see okay. that? So that it, it's coming from that place of I'm not trying to put them down. Yeah. Sure. I'm coming from an unhealthy part of me saying this has to be perfect mm-hmm. when it doesn't. Yeah. And I'm learning to yeah. change that. I'm learning to not start from that place okay. of being critical right okay. away because everything doesn't have to be just this way. Right. Mm-hmm. You would have a, diff- a different example from your But, but as you think about your response, that becomes a little foxy then. So mm-hmm. for, for the kids, if mom is always a little bit intense about that, mm-hmm. it's not a big deal to be irritated that they, I said, my, I, said you clean my, I said I cleaned my room, but it's still a mess. That's not, mm-hmm. it's not a big deal to be annoyed by that. But if that motivation isn't checked, that can mm-hmm. become a, a thing. Mm-hmm. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess, I, are you asking for an example? Uh, an example to help uh, help us with that idea of motivations or even just your comments on the Enneagram in general and just how these things can help people. Well, I think, I mean, it, you know, when you whenever you introduce a tool that's new to someone, Immediately, I think there's a large portion uh, that they kind of go, "Well, I don't need any more. I've taken so many things. I've done. Right. I have. I have plenty of tools <laughs> in the toolbox." And and the truth is, if we did that with our literal tools, we'd have no power drills. We'd have no technology that even with when it comes to computers. I mean, if you want to stay in the old way that you you grew up in, fine. But you're also not going to grow and to progress. And so I would say that for those that are, and and that's just another tool, but I think it's a fantastic tool and has worked for us. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've taken every, every uh, typology. Mm -hmm. So I I think in general, that's to me, the the value of it is, all right, uh, Mm -hmm. self-exploration, self-discovery in that, you know, who am I as a child of God? Who am I? How has God created me Mm -hmm. to, to be in, in in a relationship with others, with my wife, with my kids, with my friends? And in my business and you know that sort of thing and so mm-hmm. then all right how do I how am I willing to let go and release the 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 way I grew up or the way that I learned mm-hmm. to slowly embrace maybe another opportunity for me to continue to grow mm-hmm. and and so that's what it's been for us I mean that the you know the love languages the Enneagram other typologies have been to me, been most beneficial when I've not been so resistant to it. Mm-hmm. And I was resistant to it. I'm always, I mean, something new comes out, I don't like it. Uh, because it's not how, it's not what I, what I liked before. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just wired that way. So I get, I get that for those that wouldn't be yeah. open to that. But gosh, I mean, it's, there's, there's always going to be something yeah. Yeah. Uh, new and we need to, and this is not new. This is just right. new to us. But That's good. That's so good. Can I say too, oh, like it, with that and and just continuing to equip yourself, it's about learning more about yourself and how you're wired and how you come across, but also other people. I've noticed specifically with the Enneagram, it's really helped us with our girls, our relationships with our daughters, mm-hmm. in our marriage, with our family, brothers and sisters and mm-hmm. our moms. Um I found it so mm. insightful and helpful when I was working with all my coworkers. I'm like, oh my gosh, she doesn't mean that that way. That's just, you know, her personality and her heart's right. I mean, I always give people the benefit of the doubt, but it right. really helps to know where people are coming from. So you're not just knowing more about yourself, but you're you're able to be more gracious to people right. and more involved with people because you have more more understanding. Right. That's yeah. so good. So to, to start landing the plane here a little bit, the I think one thing that's helpful with these little foxes is to remember that they're little foxes. Mm-hmm. Now, little things can be super annoying. If you have a blister, mm-hmm. you can mess up your hike. If you have a rock in your shoe, little things can be very agitating and difficult. But we are dealing with little foxes. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that's helpful to remember that like we do this with our girls, you know, our girls are rock stars in so many areas, but when they, when they do the little things that bug us, we have to put that into context and realize, okay, wait a minute, if this is a three or a four, don't treat it like a seven or an eight. My irritation might be a seven or an eight, 
my it's I'm so tired of this blister. I'm so tired of this thing happening. But mm -hmm. truly, in the big picture, based on their motivation, based on who they are, based on where they're excelling. So my response needs to match the level of the fence versus yeah. coming on too strong. Too strong. But let, let's just talk, touch on one more thing for me. How do we have grace for people when it's not easy? How do you? How do we pursue love and health and relating appropriately when we want to just blow up? Just real practically, how do you? How do you do that? If a coworker is driving you crazy, if if it's a family member, how do you pursue the heart of a loved one when you're not really loving them? That's a good question. For me, it, um, I've had a lot of practice over the years to uh, truly take that scripture that says we take our thoughts captive. Mm -hmm. And I always, I genuinely picture, you know, like when the girls were little and they would be right by my side and then they would run off to go do something. You would grab their shirt and rein them right back mm -hmm. in, right towards mm -hmm. your, that's you know, good. right by your side. And that's how I view my thoughts. Like, okay. This is, this is offensive, or this person has really hurt me, or, oh my gosh, you know, I'm getting weary of whatever's going on. And, and everything's in our mind. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, it's about controlling our mind and our thoughts and, and the mm -hmm. fake conversations or the, That's well, good. if he said right. this, I would say this, and all of those things. And I've really, um, I see such the importance of mm -hmm. reigning in those thoughts and saying, I will think on things that are lovely good. and good and noble and right about this person, mm -hmm. the beautiful things about them versus the ugly, um, their strengths. And when you, if you just kind of do that over mm -hmm. and over again, then that lifts the irritation or the offense. So and then, of course, you have to communicate. <laughs> if, if that doesn't help, you have to right. talk to that person. But you're making but, a great point that hurt tells a story. Yeah. And the story it tells is never good. It, mm -hmm. When you're hurt, the story that it starts generating is never the benefit of the doubt. Or mm -hmm. So you have to rein that in. That's, yes. that's great. Anything you guys do to help you with that? I was just thinking about you know, who I am. Mm -hmm. I know I know who I am deep inside, mm -hmm. right? God knows who I am at the core. And I have to give that over and, and say, God, you have forgiven me of so much. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And so just trying to remember it, mm -hmm. coming from that place and saying, mm -hmm. I have to have grace for other people. I have to be, mm -hmm. we are called to that as mm -hmm. Christians um, to treat each other with grace and um, and respect mm -hmm. and love, because I know who I am mm -hmm. yeah. deep inside, and mm -hmm. and um, and God has been so so faithful and mm -hmm. so good to me. Mm -hmm. So good, I love it. I like that phrase. We're a work in progress. But when you said that, I, I thought I think from this perspective of being God's kids and being Jesus followers, we. I think we should we should say that we're we're a masterpiece in progress. We're a work of art in progress. You know, in Ephesians yeah. two ten it says that we are God's handiwork and you know, even the greatest masterpieces ever mm -hmm. ever crafted were incomplete along the way and we're still incomplete. But you know, those famous paintings and statues and sculptures were they, they were on their way to becoming brilliant works of art, even though along the way there was areas that still needed to be shaped and formed. So so you're reining your thoughts in, you're remembering who you are and extending grace, and it's good. Any, anything from you? No, I, I think that uh, those were fantastic answers, and I, for, I mean, it's probably similar to those that, I, when it came to discovering um, and realizing that God was pursuing me in relationship um, and, and kind of stopping me, I want to say he stopped me, but I also stopped too in, in my tracks and realized that, um, that the things that I, that I have been running from or mostly been running from is, is, is from him and, mm -hmm. and from that relationship. And, and when I, and the reason was, is because I felt like I, I wasn't good enough mm -hmm. and I, there's no way that I could be accepted by him because that's, that's kind of, that was my motivation growing up was just do whatever it took to achieve and yeah. to, and to, to, to be good enough and, and and to acquire these things and then then people will love me 
and then you realize they don't love you still, and 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 so, and some do, but but some don't, and yeah. and so then when I heard the message of, um, you know, there's there's no more condemnation for those yeah. who are in Christ Jesus, and and to know that God was um, that that He knew me, that He loved me, uh, that He offered me uh, a relationship, salvation through His Son, despite all of my stuff. So no matter what I could do, it wouldn't matter because he still loved me. Mm-hmm. That's a message that I have to carry with me every single day. And I think that in general, I I don't get too mm-hmm. um, bogged down with little things that irritate mm-hmm. me by, from other people. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but it certainly does. But it but because of of being reminded of that, mm-hmm. I, I kind of go I kind of go back to that that moment where I remember that I, I that God doesn't have any kind of condemnation for me. Yeah. And I need to also look at other people and say the same thing, even when they've wronged me, you know, and I, yeah. it's easy because I want to be, you know, responsive and go, sure. you, uh, you should know you wronged me and, right. uh, or that's not right. But, but truthfully, it's mm-hmm. the only way for them to then to stop in their tracks and to repent or to turn around. And I can't do that forcibly, of course, for them. But, but the only way that's going to happen is if they, if they're offered love, yes. grace, forgiveness. Yeah. And, and so, in general, I, and I know it sounds kind of, it sounds like, like a Christian, what a Christian would say, or, or very pastoral, but, well, but honestly, that I was saying, I, I said that when I experienced it. And I think right. that the more people experience that, the, the more they'll, they'll say the same thing. But, I, but Isaiah, that is what a Christian would say. Yeah. Right. And everybody in our world today is in love with love. Everybody wants to love. Love is the ultimate. But... Christian love, Jesus-based love, is a love that loves in response. Yeah. I don't love because I'm loving. I love because I have been loved. We love mm-hmm. him because he first loved us. Right. And mm-hmm. I can love unlovable people because I am not easy to love. Mm-hmm. And I can forgive when it's hard to forgive because I've been forgiven mm-hmm. when I didn't deserve it. And yeah. that's powerful. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. And um, And that kind of leads me to just a couple final thoughts. Jessica and I have been talking about how you know, we're talking a lot about injustice mm-hmm. today in the world and and co- different causes and different themes and different needs. You know, the number one injustice in the history of humanity is the injustice of sin. The number one killer, the number one oppressor of humans is sin. And mm-hmm. I don't just mean that in the cosmic sense of, you know, we violate God's commands and being separated from God. Of course, that's, of course, that's a factor and that's that's there, but just in our relationships, um, sin brings death and Mm -hmm. pride, defensiveness, um, unfaithfulness, lust, um, uh, arrogance, these things kill relationships. Mm -hmm. They, they harm relationships. And, and what we're longing for as your pastors, as your friends, what we want in our own lives is we want emotional health. We want to relate like Jesus. And that takes more than willpower. That takes an encounter from the Holy Spirit. It takes being touched by God and, and, and being an awareness of our sinfulness and mm-hmm. saying um, any area where I'm sinning in this relationship, any area where I'm violating God's commands will send a whole army of foxes running through the mm-hmm. field. Yeah. And I love what you said. There's no condemnation if we run to Jesus, the the, the source of forgiveness and healing and love. And mm-hmm. I think that's a great way to end the series. Is is, is th- this is just a, the starting of a conversation? I mean, we we might need therapy. We might need counseling. Get it if you mm-hmm. need it. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's think about these things and let's analyze our relationships mm-hmm. and try and make them as healthy as possible. And and, and it starts with, with me before God saying, I want to be right before you so I can be right before her and before mm-hmm. you who I work with and my friend and sister. And um, mm-hmm. and so I, let, let me just ask you if you have any final things that you want to say. In this series, we've talked about living with dysfunction. Mm-hmm. We've talked about the difference between codependence, independence, and interdependence. We've talked about how to communicate. We've talked about that language of gentleness. And we've talked about familiar spirits. So we've kind of covered a lot of good themes. But would you have a final comment since I've got you here? Anything that you would want to add or underscore before we wrap up? I mean, it's maybe obvious to everyone else, but we've practiced a lot of what you've been saying over the years through different relationships of ours. And it's always 
always worth it. It's painful. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's scary. Mm -hmm. It's intimidating. Um, because you can't control how the other person is going to respond or react. But I think that's one thing we've been schooled in the last couple of years too, is we can't control anything anyway. And mm -hmm. it's about letting go and saying, Lord, I need to mm -hmm. live my life with a clear conscience before you mm -hmm. and as much as I can with those that I love and interact with. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you do your part and they need to do theirs. But, um, mm -hmm. It's so it's so scary, but I would say it's so worth it and, and something that I want to continue to practice and do my whole life because I so love people. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing we've learned through the years is the lack of communication destroys so many relationships. Mm -hmm. And in the reality, it's like it's not a big deal, actually. It's just that no one would communicate. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's tragic in my opinion. And so okay. I've loved this series and, and I, I appreciate it. It's good. Mm -hmm. I would say that you, ha you have to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to point the finger mm -hmm. yeah. at a coworker, a friend, your spouse and mm -hmm. say, they're not doing this. Mm -hmm. um, but what am I doing and how am I mm -hmm. Am I willing to do the homework on myself yeah, to be able to make that change that I need to make? Mm -hmm. Because I am a work in progress, and I do need to constantly check that and say, okay, God, what are you calling me to mm -hmm. do here, and where do I need to grow? Yeah. What is it that you're working on in me, and how do I need to change? Not, mm -hmm. not how does he need to change, or you know, but what do I need to do to help in this situation or this relationship? Um, and just coming from that, that place of love, like we're doing it because we love that other person. We want yeah. that relationship yeah. with the other person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, all those are great, great responses. I think I would say that in general, the, the, our church has, has kind of displayed that to my family mm -hmm. and has, shown us love and grace and care and uh, and a desire to to be known and and that stuff i mean it happens at other other places other other groups it doesn't have only happen in, in the church environment but it's special in this in that i know it's not just um us and a desire to want to love people it's it's a willingness to go okay i'm going to go beyond what i'm even capable of That's good. Yeah. And, and God's going to help us mm -hmm. create a, 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 a hub, a, a, a center, a place that, and I don't mean like a building or, although we do need that, uh, <laughs> but, but you know, I, we, you know, not, not necessarily a, a place to gather, but a, a place in a community yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we call Grace Church mm -hmm. to extend the love of God in every, in every, um, in every way we, we can uh, yeah. through our actions, through our words. Uh, through interactions, relationships, and and I think this this is a it, it's a topic that that can be taught on every year because yes. we we need the reminders. We I know we need it, and I'm sure all of you need it. And and so I I just have been so blessed though to be a part of this community because um, it's it's created an environment where you can learn and grow through that. Not that we, anybody has it together, although there's a couple of people I think of right now who exhibit this yeah. to the nth degree. Um, and I'm so glad that they're part of Grace, but um, it's taught me how to how to carry that ethos that I believe is ultimately what God wants us to do. But then, secondly, yeah, the expression of our church, Grace Church, you know, proper, it's it has allowed for us to um, to then exhibit that in every way possible. We're not perfect, and that's okay. That's not what about that's not what it's about. Um, so we did throw we had to throw that part out. Mm -hmm. it, being perfect, having it all together, um, doing it the the only right way. I think it's it's really about being open to um, our messiness, our brokenness, yeah. and being real and authentic. Because yeah. that's in the end what comes through anyway. Yeah. Right. And um, I I value that so much, and I'm so glad to be part of this community awesome. and you guys in our relationship because yeah. you've done that for us too. Well, yeah, we love you, and thank you guys, all of you, for helping me today. And so, so we'll be done here. Um, uh, it's okay to not be okay. 
God meets you where you are. That was the tagline on our website for a long time. Emotionally healthy relationships aren't perfect. You can be healthy and bring help into a relationship, even if the relationship is still struggling. And I just want to just end by saying that um, the, the Christian message uh, about all of this is that we humans were created for life, love, purpose, hope, beauty, which is why we ache for those things. But because we have a free will, we did indeed make choices and do things that released a host of foxes and giants and, and enemies into our lives and into our world, and, and that's called sin. And yet God did not leave us um, at the mercy of those things. Mm -hmm. Jesus stepped into human history and took the consequences of all of that on the chin and reconnected us to purpose in life and God. And the way we step into that is just saying, God, I'm guilty mm -hmm. and forgive me and I want you and I need you. So I'm going to pray that way as we end. I'm going to pray for anybody who might be in that faith exploration space and then I'll pray for our church as well. Mm -hmm. So Lord Jesus... Um, thank you for what you provided for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for new life. Thank you that through you, Jesus, death doesn't have the final word. And thank you for loving us when we were so far from being lovable. And, and Lord, thank you that, that um, you love us still on our good days, on our bad days, the highs, the lows. Thank you. We open our hearts to you. And Jesus, we want you we want you to take the steering wheel of our lives and guide us and lead us and, and bring in us what the scripture calls salvation and that new birth and that opportunity to begin again as new creations in life and in your kingdom. So we want that today. We're asking for it. We're stepping into it. And we also just pray, God, touch every relationship, whether it's a, a, a best friend, a family worker, sweetheart, across the board, touch our relationships, bring a greater measure of health, and, oh God, bring an awakening along the 210 corridor and touch the people who live here. Meet them, empower them, draw them, have your way in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So it's great to have you all here. And I know that we all miss you. I miss yeah. you. That's miss the you other thing that's hard about COVID is we miss you so much. I miss seeing your faces and love you. Yeah. All right, God bless. See you next week.